Now that we've had an opportunity to look at the equations of linear functions, let's take a look at the characteristics of the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. In geometric terms, parallel lines, or the slopes of parallel lines, are defined in the following ways. First, if two non-vertical lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. So begin with a theorem-sounding idea. We know that they're parallel, then their slopes have to be equal. We could also look at this from a converse point of view by stating if the slopes of two distinct non-vertical lines are equal, then the lines are parallel. And also, we can look at it as any two vertical or horizontal lines are parallel. So our first two take in consideration only non-vertical lines. The last one does account for those vertical conditions. So when we look at it and start talking about multiple lines at the same time and we're defining their slopes, we would have the slope of the first item and the slope of the second item and these have to be equal in order for us to have parallel lines. So let's start looking at points on lines and see about their parallel. So are the lines that pass through the following pairs of points parallel? So we have the line that would pass through AB with points A, negative, three, six, negative 13, 6, and B, ne negative 1, 2, and then C, D, with points at C, 3, 6, and D, 6, 7. What are their slopes? Well, let's take a look at this and begin by finding the slope of AB. That's going to be the rise. So from 6 to 2, what's the change? That is a change of negative 4. And the run from negative 13 to negative 1, that is a rise, uh, a movement to the right of 12. Negative 4 divided by 12 is a negative 1 third. Now let's look for line segment CD. So slope of CD is going to equal from 6 to 7, that's a rise of 1. From 3 to 6, that is a run of 3. And there's nothing to simplify here, so yes, these are parallel. Let's take a look at our next one. PQ and ST. For PQ, our run, so our slope of PQ, the rise from 6 to negative 6 is a negative 12. Our run from 4 to 7 is 3, so we get a slope of negative 4. The slope of line segment ST, the rise from 0 to 12 is 12. The run from negative 3 to negative 6 is a negative 3. And again, we come up with a negative 4. So yes, these lines are parallel as well. Write the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals 4x plus 7 and passes through the point P, which is at 8 and 1. Because this information is given, all we know really of our new line is its slope and one point on that line. So pulling up information from our last lesson, let's write this in point-slope form. So point-slope, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Our slope has to be the same if the lines are to be parallel. So we go y equals a slope of 4. Now let's insert our point. Our y1 is 1, our x1 is 8. And we now have the, an equation for a line that meets this criteria. So parallel lines, same slope, uh, being able to calculate that slope between two given points, pretty basic. Perpendicular, also a basic concept. When we start talking about the slopes of perpendicular lines, it gets a little bit different. So let's take a look. Perpendicular slopes are going to be defined in the following ways. 
First, if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is negative 1. A little bit different than what we had with parallel slopes, so this one is defined as a product definition. Next, in the converse format, if the slopes of two lines have product of negative 1, then the lines are perpendicular. Same idea as what we had before, just looking at it from pre-existing lines or pre-existing known slopes. Lastly, any horizontal line and vertical line are perpendicular. And that makes sense. If something goes straight up and down, it will be perpendicular to something that's going completely left to right. Now, when we look at these, the slope of item 1, or line 1, is going to uh, times the slope of the second has to equal negative 1. So another way of looking at this is the slope of item 1 is the opposite of 1 over the slope of item 2. Or we can say that if slope of 1 is a, b, or a over b, rise divided by run, then the perpendicular slope will be equal to the opposite of b over a. And that's what we're going to use most of the time when we're talking about slopes of perpendicular lines. So let's get some practice identifying and writing equations for these. Are the lines that pass through the following pairs of points perpendicular? Well, let's begin again with line segment or the line that passes through AB. Our rise from negative 3 to negative 23, slope of AB is equal to a negative 20, divided by the run from 1 to 6 is 5. Negative 20 divided by 5 is a negative 4. Now the slope of CD is going to be equal to our rise from negative 3 to, negative, uh, to positive 1 is 4. And our run from 2 to 18 is 16. Simplifying that fraction, we get a positive 1 fourth. We started with a negative 4 over 1, if you will, and our next is positive 1 over 4. They are opposites and reciprocals, so yes, these form perpendicular lines. Next, let's look at PQ and ST. So the slope of PQ is equal to our rise of 4, run of negative 2, 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Now the slope of line segment ST, or line ST, is we have a rise from negative 7 to negative 10. That's a negative 3 rise, or it went down 3 units. And a run from 5 to 2 is also negative 3, and we come here with a slope of 1. We started with our first slope of negative 2 over positive 1, and ended with positive 1 over positive 1. So no, these are not opposite reciprocals. They are not perpendicular to one another. Lastly, write an equation line that is perpendicular to y equals negative 2x minus 8, and passes through the point P at 4, 4. So, again, we will be able to use our slope and a point, so let's use point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Parts that we know right away are y1 and x1. So we have y minus 4 equals our slope times x minus 4. Now what is our slope? If our slope 1 is negative 2 over 1, then its perpendicular will be a positive 1 over 2. Opposite sign and reciprocal. So our equation comes out to be y minus 4 equals 1 half times x minus 4. And this line will be perpendicular to the original, and it will go through the point 4, 4. So parallel and perpendicular lines in terms of slope, parallel lines have the exact same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocals. 
Check back, make sure you understand these concepts because we're going to use them in future chapters and lessons in order to determine the characteristic of different shapes, particularly quadrilaterals and higher level polynomials.